Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be going over how I add ivy into my scenes in Blender. This has a nice touch to objects and buildings and I really like adding it into a lot of my nature scenes to help things look more overgrown. Uh, it's a geometry node tree that's available for free or by donation basis and I think that it's really useful. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to this Gumroad page. This is where you can download all the files that you'll need to be able to use this geometry nodes tree in your own project. So once you go ahead and you download all the files, what you're going to do is you're going to open up Blender and whatever project that you're working on. And you're going to go up to file and you're going to go to append and then what you're going to do is you're going to navigate over to wherever you have those files saved so i have them saved in my add-ons folder um and then we're just going to go and click on the node tree file and then we're going to go to node tree then we're going to click on this ivy generator node tree and we're going to hit append and once these ivy instances pop up then you know that this has been properly appended into your project so what we're going to do to be able to actually use this node tree is we're going to hit shift a and we're just going to add in a cube just gonna scale it up and bring it over so you can see it and what we're going to do is we're actually going to click on the modifier properties and we're going to add a geometry nodes modifier so once the geometry nodes modifier is added onto your cube what you can do is you can click on this drop down menu and you're going to click on ivy generator and what that's going to do is it's going to start applying that geometry nodes node tree to this cube and now, as you can see, nothing's happening right now, and it's because we need to set up a target for this to affect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a collection, and we're going to just type in a new collection, and we're going to type, call this like add IV. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag in this building. So I'm going to put this building in this collection, and then on this cube, what we're going to do is we're going to set the target to the add IV collection. And what you can see is there's now IV on this building. And what you can do is you can now move around this cube all over this building and it's going to properly put ivy all around the edges of this building. So you can bring it out, you can scale it up, bring it down, you can rotate it, you can do whatever you want with this. What else you can do, which is really helpful, is you can mess with all the settings on the right hand side and the geometry nodes and the modifiers property. So you can go and you can do a lot of things here. You can change the scale of the ivy, you can change the density if you want. I like leaving it just at 100. You can change the distance minimum between everything. We set this to 0.05. You can change the resolution to whatever you want. I usually keep it at like 10 or 12. Um, you can change the radius. Kind of all the settings that you want are just going to be in here. I would just recommend playing around and just finding out what works the best for you. Uh, I usually don't change too many of these besides maybe the scale or the density or the distance minimum in between the objects because I find that pretty much the defaults work really well for most instances of this. You can just go ahead and you can move around this cube wherever you want. You're going to have IV over everything. And then what you can also do is you can add more objects into this collection and IV will start to spawn on them as well. So if we go ahead and we drag this arch in and we drag this cube in between the two objects, you can see that the IV is starting to grow in between the two things. And I feel like this adds a really nice touch of having the IV grow on multiple objects and it really helps blend everything together so if we bring this building a little closer and if we bring this cube over you can see it's like the arch is now very overgrown with ivy and it's also growing onto this building we could drag this up a little bit if we don't like how it's going on the bottom and then what you can also do is you can hit shift d and this is going to add in another instance so you can kind of fine tune where you want this at maybe we want some of this on the side maybe not as much maybe scale this one up a little bit Hit shift D again, and we could have some more on this side, or we could scale it down, and then bring up the scale to make it even again, maybe drag this up so it's just over here. And so now we have IV all over this building and this arch. Uh, what I also really like to do is I like to apply this to the ground as well. And what this will do is this will have the IV also connect to the ground. So if we move this instance over and like scale it up, you can see how it's also growing out of the ground now onto the building and I feel like this really helps add a lot into making objects look very overgrown in your scene and you can kind of just put it in whatever objects you want and just have it affect everything in your scene. So if we go ahead and we click on the render view we can go ahead and we can see how this ivy actually looks textured and I feel like the default texture for this is actually pretty good. You can change the texture if you want for it but I honestly just keep everything usually pretty default with this and just drag it around on everything that I want to do. Uh, if we wait for this to load, you can see how this all looks, and now our objects look all nice and overgrown. So this is something that I found, and I feel like it's really, really useful. I hope that you've learned something from this. I would recommend applying this to your own scenes if you're trying to make them look overgrown and kind of old or just wherever. It looks really good on any objects, and it's really nice that it's uh, procedurally generated with geometry nodes, so it can just really apply to whatever you want. It looks really good on walls or balconies or 
just anything for your project. Um, my only recommendation that I would have is just make sure that you, when you end up having a lot of instances of this, I like to uh, put them all in their own collection so then I can toggle them on and off if I'm still working on the project because it really starts to bog down the project once you have a lot of instances of this and it can get pretty heavy on your computer. But yeah, I hope you learned something from this and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.